Well hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Today on the channel I'm going to show you how I made these castles using a scroll saw and some old offcuts off the sides of logs. A lot of these were trees that I cut down during my work and um, these are the flitches off the side of the log when I cut some timber out of the log. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you uh, what they look like before and the process of making um, what sort of timber I used in this and how I picked the, the style of log to use and the portion of the log to use too. So I'll show you that now. So this is what they look like when they're down and they're not the castle. That You're looking at just a rounded piece of timber like this piece here. This one hasn't been cut. In the front there we have a piece that was cut, out, a castle that was made out of an old stud. This one here with the lump coming out the front, I used it as character. And see the, the mould and mildew and added character. And these two were little just uh, middles out of ones that I started doing that had deformities in them. This particular one was made out of this white cedar. And this is what white cedar looks like. Uh, it's a fairly soft wood. But that was a, a side off a log of white cedar. So to do these you will need a scroll saw. Here I'm setting my scroll saw up at a one degree angle. This is the angle that we will be cutting at, which makes the portions of the castle taper out. As you see with the square, there's a slight gap at the bottom of the square, square sorry, and it's touching the blade at the top. It's only fractional. This is a small, fine scroll saw blade. So the table will be angled one degree to the blade. There is only one direction that you can cut these and that's in accordance to the way your table tilts and you must cut it in that pattern. In my case the table drops on the left hand side so I must cut from the left to the right. That way the bottom of my cut is wider and the top of my cut is narrower. Now on your uh, scroll saw this may be different. You might have to go from right to left. Here's an example of cutting the wrong direction. Now on the top three segments, I cut the right way from left to right in accordance to my table to make the taper. But on the bottom segment here, I accidentally cut the wrong way from right to left. And as a result, it reversed the taper. So to get it to hold firm, because this is how these segments hold, they hold by a taper. You push them out from the bottom and the taper actually locks them in, like wedges them in. So that's an example of the wrong way. Now if your taper is not steep enough, now you'll have to do trial and error depending on the thickness of your board. This one was cut to, wasn't quite one degree and as a result it just slipped straight through. You need some form of taper on your blade. Now if one degree uh, on your scroll saw lets it slip through, you'll have to adjust it steeper than one degree. So here I'm cutting from the left to the right which is the orientation that I have to take uh, to get this to cut the taper right. Now the way and the shape you cut your uh, castle, this is a very basic design that I'm doing here and I do little buttresses at the front. As you see I'm cutting the little buttress now and if this is going to be a very basic one I'll just fast forward through this and I'll show you the finished result when I've done this one. So as you can see I'm cutting through it, cutting the buttresses. And you'll notice how it's wedge shaped from the front to the back on the castle. It sort of tapers from the front to the back on the sides of the castle. And the reason that is, is it holds it into the back of the block of the wood as well. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. So as you finish one section, you simply push it out, and then cut the next section. So here I'll blow it off with the blower, get all the fine dust out of there, because there's a lot of fine dust on these. Now you can tell the orientation which way they go, because the rough edge of the timber. On a piece of timber, like a stud piece, uh, you have to make sure you, uh, it'll only go in one any one way anyway. So 
So you simply you slip them in like that. Like I say, from the back edge that you can see to the front, the back edge on the back of the board is also narrower than the front edge of the castle. That locks it in so it doesn't want to slip out the back of the log as you push it through. So push them in, tip it upside down and give it a bit of a shake. And I push them up with my thumbs and my fingers and the taper locks it in from below. It's like a wedge effect and it's quite good that way. Now, if I'd went a little bit shallower taper on this, less than one degree, it may have made the pieces extend further up. Now, the more buttresses you put on, sometimes that restricts the height that they extend to too. So the second last segment of this, I didn't use a buttress at all on the corner. The buttress is these little pieces on the corners down the bottom. And it, it extended further because of that. Here's another one I'm cutting. This is that log with a fair bit of character about it. And I used the, the big lump coming out of the side as like a rocky, rocky outcrop on the side of a cliff face. And, you know, you can use a log to your advantage to get more character. I just finished cutting the corner buttress there on that one. I'm going to curve the wall upwards now. If you notice the cut mark from where I entered at the back, it wedges in, it tapers in to wider at the front than at the back. And like I said, that locks it in at the back of the um, timber when you push it out. Now, this is the way I do them. Uh, you could make those buttress pieces a smaller diameter. In this case, I just made them bigger. Mine's not the best scroll saw, it's a very cheap scroll saw, really. I haven't done a lot of scroll saw work with it over the years at all. But um, I've used it to make a few of these over the years and different other little tiny things too. But I'll fast forward through the rest of this one and I'll show what this one looks like at the end. I'll just sort of show you this segment here slowly just so you get an idea uh, how I cut it. Some people choose to lose, leave the bark on the side of their log. Now that's all very well and good if the log's nice and dry and the bark hasn't separated. But if you cut a green log and it's the wrong moon phase, it won't stay on. Uh, different phases of the moon lock the bark on tighter. Uh, and what I find is that simmer dries it, it will, it will um, shed the bark. So look, I've pushed that first segment out. Now I'm going into the second segment. I've drawn a bit of a pencil mark to follow there. Um, and uh, you can do that too. Look online, you can get some shapes of castles. You can't really do square corners, I don't think. Uh, if you've got a really good scroll saw, you might be able to, but, you know, with mine, you wouldn't be able to cut a nice square corner. So you'll notice I didn't uh, pull the segments apart. The reason that is, is it gives a bit more support for these finer little top segments of the castle. I hold my finger on the segments. As you'll see, it'll bob up and down a bit here. It just bobs up and down a little bit there as I take my finger off. So keep your finger on top of the segment as you're cutting it out, of course, away from the blade. And uh, you can cut it out quite successfully, that little tiny piece for the top.
So I'll quickly blow the segments down and then I assemble this castle to see how it come together. I'm by far no artist. You could make these far more fancier than what I do. This is what they look like apart. Like I showed you on the last one, you slipped them together. Notice how the taper holds it in nice and firm. And it's imperative that you cut it the same way every time. Once you work at the angle, so it makes it wider at the bottom and narrow at the top, it's imperative you cut the same way. Cut one wrong, it wrecks the whole castle. Cut it too loose. You can glue them if you cut it too loose, but then they're a rigid fixture. You can't push them down on in themselves. And there you have it, one completed castle apart from the wood burning side of it. So before I pull my castle down, I mark the doorway to the castle on the front of the castle. That way I know what height to put the doorway in it. Just a little mark, some people drill holes for these sort of things. I just burn it in with the, this is an old soldering iron, it's an adjustable temperature one. So I can get the tip red hot on this one and look somebody gave me this years ago I don't do a lot of uh, biography so um, or pyrography stuff as some people call it um, but this does the job fine for what I do so I usually taper the road in which gives it some sort of perspective um, down over the what would be the fields in front of a castle or castle depending on where you're from so I just burn that in gently and I taper it out from the doorway to give that perspective that it's in the distance So I usually pull the segments out to work on them from now on. It makes it a lot easier to handle them. I do put them back together uh, to, to do um, some markings so you can know where the little bottom entry doorways are for the other, other levels and things like that to get more of an idea what it looks like. So here I'm marking the doorway and just burning it in and just basic burning. Like I say, I'm not the best at this, but this is not the best tool for it. You can get proper tools for this online. Some of them are quite expensive. But if you really get into it, some people are, are quite good artists at this wood burning in that. Now I move on to the battlement parts of the tops of the walls. I think their proper name is a crenellation. So that consists of the little stone piers that are built with the gaps in between that the arches can fire through. And on the bottom section, I generally make them bigger than on the top sections. That adds a bit of perspective to the, the castle. So if you're looking at it from a distance, um, you would expect the ones closer to you look, to look bigger than the ones further away, which would be the top uh, towers on the castle. I just quickly slip it back together here to mark some windows in. These are what they call arrow slots. 
in the sides of the towers. The, t the towers are actually what I call the buttresses before, because they do act as a, a strength to the, the walls of the castle. So I've marked them in, just burned some little slots in the walls in the towers there. Then I pretty well just pull it, start pulling it down segment by segment and burning all the battlements in more and I put it back together to mark some other windows and that in towards the end. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Here you see me paralleling a little pencil line through to know how deep to go with my burn marks down the edge of the wall so it looks nice and uniform. I just gauge the distance between them by eye and you can get quite good at it too and it comes up quite neat anyhow. Thanks for joining me as I did these little castles to show you guys how I made them. I hope it was informative enough. Um, I learnt how to do this many years ago. In about 1994 I worked it out. There was an old fella that was a production wooden machinist that used to do a little bit of stuff on the side like this. And he showed me how to do it and I thought it was quite an interesting little thing to do. There's not much of a use for them. They're a great little ornament. You could probably stash something underneath them uh, to hide something if you wanted to. Yeah, there's a few things I neglected or forgot to tell uh, during the video. The flatter you make your board here, uh, if you get a log with a flat section here, that there will give you more of a flatter top on your castle. So just bear that in mind. The depth of your board, um, if you set it at one degree for a very narrow board, the chances of you pushing it straight through uh, are higher. So you might have to set your angle greater. So do some test pieces. Get a piece of timber, test it out, and see how you go with it first before you go and cut it. That would be the best thing to do there. But otherwise, look, thanks for joining us. I hope, like I said, I hope it was informative enough. And uh, I think you'll get the general gist of it. If you haven't got a scroll saw, they're quite cheap to buy new. Uh, if you buy a cheap one, that is. Um, but a lot of people have access to these two through clubs, woodworking clubs, etc. So give it a go. They're quite a fun little project to do. Or right, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Please share me with your friends. Hit that notification bell. That's an important one if you want to uh, see some more of my videos. There are playlists there. So have a look at those too. Okay, thanks for joining us then and bye for now.